Welcome back, my friends, to the show that airs about once every three to 16 weeks. Sorry about that. We'll uh, we'll work harder. This is another episode of Five Things, where I look at five things worth mentioning about a particular topic, whether it be TV, comics, sports, movies, video games, or anything else you might get a kick out of. Check out the last two videos, Five Things That Need to Go in Theme Parks, and five movies that could work as reboots. I am Bob, and now that college football's regular season has wrapped up, let's look at one of the best and craziest things about the sport as a whole, the rivalry trophies. Not all rivalries have them, but the ones that do really cherish them. Sometimes. We'll get to that. Even the internet has helped start a new trophy, so let's look at the first one. The $5 Bits of Broken Chair Trophy, Minnesota vs. Nebraska. It started as a Twitter joke between faux Pelini and Minnesota's mascot. It's a broken wooden chair with two $5 bills in it. Yep, the alter ego of head coach Bo Pelini and a gopher started a trophy series. After winning it in 2015, Nebraska did take it home, but that was the last anyone ever saw of it. Sadly, it seems to have vanished in a cornfield and remains missing to this day. If it ever shows up again, it would still be the youngest trophy in the Big Ten, which has a lot of hardware. So staying in the conference, let's look at the Little Brown Jug, Minnesota versus Michigan. It dates back to 1909, making it the oldest and most played for of all FBS trophies. It started when the team manager from Michigan was concerned that fans would contaminate the team's water supply, so he bought a five-gallon Ethanware jug. Ethanware? Earthenware? Eh, whatever. A big jug for 30 cents. Now, I know it's the 1900s, but five gallons is not enough if you're worried about clean water for an entire football team, let alone the backfield. In the game, Minnesota scored very late to tie the score. Fans rushed the field, and the game was called due to the pandemonium and oncoming storms. It's here where the jug was either left behind or stolen, then painted Minnesota brown with a score of 6-6, six to six, which they felt was as good as a win. When Michigan heard about their property in the hands of Minnesota, they asked for it back which Minnesota then said, you'll have to beat us for it. Michigan did beat Minnesota the next time they played, painted the other half Wolverine blue, and the winner has taken it every time they've played since. Also, Minnesota wouldn't win the jug outright until 1919. Take that, you thieves. The Platypus Trophy, Oregon versus Oregon State. Here's one that I love by how simple and creative at the same time the thing is. What do you get when you sex up a duck and a beaver? That's right, an abomination against nature. Not only does it look like a wooden banana, it was so desired that the thing was stolen and lost for about 40 years. It was recovered, so there is hope for the broken chair. But after seeing how ugly the thing is, both schools' ADs refused to use it as the trophy for the Civil War, and it changed hands by the school's alumni association only. The Golden Hat, Texas versus Oklahoma. This trophy goes to the biggest rivalry on the list, the Red River Shootout. It's such a big matchup, there are four trophies awarded to the winner after the game. But the only one that means anything is the Golden Hat. Or as when it first was made, the Bronze Hat. Then it had a refurb to a 10-gallon Golden Hat in the 1970s. Which, let's be honest, gold is better. Which would you rather? Think about it. A gold medal or a bronze medal? All the great things are gold. Big gold belt, big golden calf, golden ring or a bronze ring. Yeah, gold is better. Eh, maybe, except for the ring one. Before I get to the final one on the list, I just wanted to say that these trophies are just five of the many that I found to be interesting. So I'll revisit this topic again. Leave a comment below if you think there is a trophy that needs more notoriety, because there are some weird ones. A skillet? Also, major thanks goes to Corey for making this awesome background art. You can find his channel, Coin Explosion, here. Or if you're on a mobile device, the link is down below. I know annotations don't work on them, but I refuse to use those weird end card screens where the image covers the original video. It's a personal thing. I won't do that to you guys. The Civil Conflict Trophy, Yukon versus UCF. Let's recap. We've seen trophies lost, stolen, found, and then refused, and pimped out. Now here's one where both schools were not on the same page. Here's Yukon. UConn has minor rivalries when it comes to football with UMass and Rhode Island. But one day they decided they wanted another rival with a school on the same playing level as them to help boost morale for the 2015 season. Usually your rival is a school nearby, so your choices could be Temple, who's in the same conference, 
And then you have Syracuse, Rutgers, Boston College, Penn State, and Army, just to name a few. UConn ended up going with a school in the same conference, but not any of the ones nearby. Instead, they handpicked the University of Central Florida, a school over 1,200 miles away, and they've only played each other twice before. Then the real sneaky stuff started to happen. Without any conversation with UCF again, they made an incredibly basic trophy for the 2015 season, but put the score of the 2014 win over UCF on the trophy and excluded the score of the 2013 62-17 butt-kicking UCF gave UConn. Fast forward back to 2015, and UConn wins, adding a second score to the trophy that many UCF fans are just now hearing about for the first time. I guess ticking off another fan base is one way to start a rivalry. Then the next year, UCF heads north and wins 24-16. Staffers bring the trophy over to UCF sideline. No one touches it. Both teams leave the field, and the trophy is just sitting there. In this photo, you could see it sitting on the UCF bench at the 40-yard line, right there. Did they mail it to UCF? Did they scrap it? Either way, it's the perfect way to say F you to your made-up rivalry. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to continue the discussion, you can comment below or find us on the Twit Machine at Cretans Guild. Now let's play a game. You see that super sexy subscribe button? Think about your favorite college football team. As an example, I'll use Florida State as mine. And if you don't have a favorite, then think of the closest FBS school to you. Now count out the letters in the name. Again, mine would be 12. Now click that subscribe button that many times. Or if you don't want to do the math, just click it once. I promise we won't flood your subscription feed since we average a video about once every blue moon. But we do hope to pick up the pace more in 2017. Thanks again. Go hug a nerd.